Over the next few months, we're going to do a series of videos where we teach you what we just learned on the sawmill. Hope you find this educational or at least entertaining. So you bought your new sawmill. You throw on that first log and make your cuts and you're a little bit disappointed at the outcome of the lumber. Let me show you what I've learned to cut stable 2x4s. These lessons will work on all types of lumber. I want to say up front that this school is not all encompassing. This schoolhouse is called a schoolhouse of hard knocks. I seem to always learn that way. Let's get to class. So when I first started sawing, I would just cut the bark off and make a square cant and just start cutting through it. This was absolutely the wrong technique. I had no understanding of the forces that were going on inside the wood while drying. Let's talk about grain orientation. The growth rings on this piece of wood are horizontal to the width. Let's break this down. All that means is the growth rings go side to side with a piece of lumber laying flat. This is also called plane cut. This is the least stable lumber. No matter which cut type that you use, the more dense the grain, the better. And you guys hang with me. We're gonna actually do this in real life. Plain cut lumber is very prone to cupping. Quarter sawed lumber is probably the, one of the most stable boards you can get. This is also called vertical grain. The grain will run from a zero to a 30 degree angle. This lumber is very stable and it also has a very highly desired look. Cathedrals in your lumber increases the chance of it being unstable. Let's talk about how we're gonna get this type of cut off of the sawmill. We're gonna use the modern quarter sawing technique. Now it's time to get to it. The older the trees are, the better the lumber generally is. Older trees have tighter growth rings and that makes the wood more dense and more stable. We procured these trees through our local tree service. We used our tractor and trailer to transport these logs. For an extra fee, they would bring them to us. If you're new to our store, this is the old Ichabod crane truck that we got running after it set for 10 years. The old truck's about 50 years old. Ichabod gives us the option of going and getting logs or using it to lift on the other end. Now that we've selected the logs, let's get back to the sawmill. The hose on my gravel has come down again. I need to put a spring on that thing and get it out of the way. In my case, with a manual mill, I survey the log and then use the tractor to kind of set it on the right way. It's not always right, but I can generally get it pretty close. This log is about 18 inches on both ends, so it has very little taper. With true quarter sawing, you would cut the log in half and then cut each half in half. So you'd have four quarters. Well, my sawmill doesn't have a throat deep enough to do that. So I have to cut a, a, a cant out of it, just four sides and then start my cut. So I want to be quiet and just let you watch me do this to get it down to the square cant. Then we'll go, we'll go forward. So let me just be quiet for a minute. I've been told I can't be quiet. Thank you. 
So now that the log is cut in a square cant, let's talk about our plan. The very center of the log, or the pith, is the weak point. So we're gonna cut this out. We're gonna cut us two separate cants, and each cant will be two inches by four inches. In the real world, we would rotate the log and cut this crack out, but this is just a picture. So I'm now cutting the first of the two big cants. This, this cant will be two inches by four inches. My sawmill is an entry level sawmill and it can only cut down six inches. So this four inches, you can see it's pretty close to the top, but I can get two more. As we get a little further down this video, you'll see where I can cut six inches down. I'll cut down one set of two by fours, another set of two by fours, and then the third set of two by fours. Then I'll have to remove them before I can go further. This is the limitations of my sawmill, but may not be the limitation of yours. I'll set the first can off, and this is two inches by four inches by 10 foot long. Even though it's tempting to turn this can over and cut the wane off of the other side, that would leave us with a pith, which would end up making the boards weak anyway. This is a nice looking board, but once it dries, there's a very, very high possibility that it's gonna crack right down the center. I may go ahead and rip it into two smaller boards. Now it's time to turn our cants up, start cutting two by fours. Let's get them stacked up. Here we go, we're finally ripping two by fours. You can see what I'm talking about here. The three two by four stacked on top of each other is all my sawmill wants. I'll have to offload these and then do my finishing cut. It may seem silly to some, but this is extremely satisfying to cut your own two by fours. Those are real two by fours also, not those mini me's you see at the box stores. You guys hang with me, we're almost done here and I wanna show you the, the two by fours we cut. They're some of the most true two by fours that I believe I've ever cut. I may upgrade this little motor to probably a 14 horsepower pretty soon. What do you guys think? Seven and a half horsepower, I, I'm asking a lot for it. So here's the last little bit. We're flipping these boards over, getting the last two by fours out of them. We have just enough to uh, cut the wane off and that'll leave us uh, another couple of two by fours. You look at the end grain here, if we dry these correctly, storm properly, this is gonna be some outstanding structural two by fours. Listen, I appreciate you watching our channel. God bless and have a great day.